All right, so I've got uh, five layers. You can do five or more that are layered on top of each other. And I know right away I'm going to want to delete some stuff. Remember, we're allowed to uh, take away anything we want to get the image we want, and we're allowed to transform it, to stretch it, to rotate it, to mess with it. But if I use the eraser, which is in the middle of your tools here, and I click on it, this might happen, right? It says, this smart object must be rasterized before proceeding. Edit, co edit contents will no longer be available. Rasterize the smart object. OK. Don't say OK. And that's a good rule. If this kind of thing comes up, make sure you understand what it's telling you before you say OK. So I'm going to try to explain it to you. <laughs> Uh, in Photoshop, when you bring an image in from an outside image file, because all we did is drag and drop these in, it will come in as what's called a smart object. And a smart object is something that's incredibly useful to digital artists that we're going to be using a lot later when we're using vectors with our Photoshop images. But what it does is it locks your image and keeps you from being able to edit it, at least in ways like subtracting and changing pixels. So in order to edit it, we have to right click on the layer. And how do you know it's a smart layer? Because the little layer icons in your layer window, they have that little kind of checkerboard icon in the corner. Notice that your background image does not have that. So for each one that has that, you're going to want to right click on it in the gray part of the selected layer and say rasterize layer. So what a smart object is, is it's referencing an outside file and showing it to you in Photoshop. Rasterizing means now Photoshop will memorize all these pixels and just keep them in Photoshop for you, which allows you to do anything you want to them. If it doesn't give me that option, uh -huh. that means it's already rasterized? Yes. So if I try to do that to a, one that's been rasterized, it will be grayed out. Well, see, mine doesn't even give me grayed out options. All right. I'll come look. <laughs> okay, so I'm anxious to, to make this into something. So I've rasterized all my layers, but it's a lot of information there. Because it's multiply, multiply lets all the blacks and grays come through. So it's getting really dark in a lot of places. So I'm going to have to simplify first. And I'm going to turn off my layers. So the first thing we want to know about layers is they can be turned on and off with the little eyeball icons. And I might even start with my background layer. And I might decide, you know, I don't like that my background layer is so recognizable and so straightforward. So what am I going to do? I'm going to click on the default colors, just black in the foreground, white in the background. And that little default button is right above your foreground background swatches at the bottom of your tools. And then I'm going to use um, the eraser. <coughs> And I'm going to use a standard brush up at the top, a hard round, and 100% hardness at a size that's like a pencil eraser. Right? So about like that. So mine's almost 200 pixels. And I'm just going to, on my background, just erase away. Now notice, it's erasing. But is it taking it all away? So whenever you use a tool, and this eraser is the first tool we've used, the properties for that tool will show up at the top. And these properties are set to whatever the last person used who used this program. So the reason my tool isn't taking it all away is because my opacity is only set to 65. So I want to change all of those to 100. 100 flow, 100 opacity, keep smoothing at zero, and then it will just take away like normal. And I'm going to start erasing. I'm going to erase away his head. Because it's a background layer, background layers can't be transparent. They have to be filled with pixels. Because this is a, a JPEG image, and JPEGs have to have a full rectangle of pixels. But that's one way you can edit away and take away. Take away his knuckles. I'm going to recommend you take away anything that's really clearly identifiable to a character. Another way you can take away 
is to use your lasso tool. And this might be a better way. It's more like using an X-Acto knife and cutting. And you can circle something. Like I could take the inside wing here of his helmet and his hair and just click and drag a selection, like I'm cutting with an X-Acto knife, and then just hit delete. And if it's a background layer, it will say, well, what do you want to fill that space with? Because you can't just delete it in a background. And I want to fill it with white 100%. So that's a way I can take away. Another thing I can do, besides just taking away, is to transform the object. And to do that, I'm going to use my lasso to select all of it, because it's a background layer. I have to do this first. And then I use a shortcut that we're going to use a lot. So we're getting used to it early. Command-T. The command button is on either side of your spacebar on a Mac. On a PC, this would be the control button. But for Mac, it's Command. So Command T. What that does is it gives me what's called a transform box around my image, just like your smart object box when you brought them in. That allows me to rotate it. It allows me to scale it, squish it. And this is what I love most. If I right click within the active transform box, I get more transforming options. A skew. You can play with that, which kind of tugs at it from one corner or another. Dis, uh, distort, which does the same thing as skew, but even allows more flexibility. Right? Perspective does it more in a linear, mathematical way. It's a little picky. I don't use that much. And then my absolute favorite, which we'll be using a lot, warp. Warp puts a very simple nine uh, grid screen, nine square grid screen over it, which gives you anchor points to push and pull like you're rolling dough. And you really get to make this image kind of fit the shape and form that you like. Right? And then don't forget the basics like scale, which makes it bigger or smaller, right? Or squishes it or widens it and rotate. But then you also have some more extreme ones if you right click within your transform box, like flip horizontal. So it will be the mirror image. Or flip vertical. But if you flip vertical and you flip horizontal, that's the same as rotating it 180 degrees. <laughs> so you'll get a sense of this. The goal, like Arturo Herrera, is to use the line quality in a way you like but not to make it rely on the recognition of the character. And once you're happy with what you've transformed, hit return. This new version of Photoshop is going to give us lots of little helpful animations. That's annoying, but we'll get used to it. All right. And then, because we have this selection active, we have to hit Command-D. Command-D to deselect. Command-D is a very helpful thing. Because sometimes you have a selection that's active and you don't even know about it. And the computer's not doing what you want. And it won't until you deselect. Okay, now we know those tools. So next I'm going to go to the next layer. And I'm going to hit Command T to transform it. And I'm going to start playing with it. Scaling it up. Rotating it around. Right clicking and warping. Fitting it all on the paper in a way that's interesting. and erasing away from the image, especially if there are things I don't like in it, like watermarks or random pieces of, of dirt. Then hit return. You can also use at the very top of your tool bar <laughs> the move tool, which will just help you reposition it. And for here, to delete from my second layer, I'm going to use the lasso. I don't really like this syringe very much. And just hit delete. Just cut away from it. And this little scan artifacts in the corner here, let's get rid of those. Get rid of all this noise. And then in terms of making it less recognizable, I'll use my eraser. I can erase out the eye. Maybe erase out one edge of the head. 
if you erase out erase the outside of the nose and then see how that layers up right maybe decide to erase a lot more just keep some of those kind of shading lines something that's interesting I like how it makes it look like Thor has furry arms okay next layer Command T, you can mess with it, you can warp it, you can rotate it, you can push and pull it. I really like this, this skull uh, shoulder guard more than most things about him. You can hit return and then hit Command T again just to get to what's called free transform which allows you to scale and rotate very quickly. Then go back to right clicking within it and pushing and pulling. <coughs> and then I'll turn on the layers behind and I'll use the move tool, but the move tool will only affect the layer I've selected. Right. And I figure where does my composition need something interesting? Well, I like the skull up here. With the ear, maybe I can use that. So I hit return, but I'm going to delete a lot of the other stuff from that layer. I don't like the muddiness in there. I don't like the muddiness in here. So you can start to be pretty selective and pretty brutal with what you cut out. Because this is our artistic experimentation. We are not slaves to the source material in any way. And if you have too much visual information screaming for the viewer's attention everywhere, it weakens the overall engagement with the whole piece. I might take an area and decide I want to erase from multiple layers. And then I can just use the same selection, the same area to cut out, and then apply it to different layers. So apply it to this layer, then apply it to this layer, until everything cleans up. And we'll get better and better at our selections. So don't worry too much about that yet. It's okay if they're a little rough. Okay, next layer. There's a lot going on here. Before I even warp, I'm going to take those lines away. Uh, take some of the facial features away. And now I might warp it thinking, where do I want features like that hair and that scarf? How do I want them used? They look kind of good there. And then I can just erase away other areas I don't think are as helpful. And the beauty of Photoshop is you can go back and visit all of these layers and keep adjusting them to your desires. Okay, and last, I'm on my last layer. And of course, it's my heaviest, blackest layer. So maybe I shrink it a little and just play with this kind of black tongue shape that's coming out of it. And delete a lot of the other stuff 
especially this cropped off sword. I definitely don't want that. Or these shadow lines. 